Today, me and Tuck are going to show you how to fill a deep raised bed for cheap that will produce massive productive plants. Let's go! This tall metal raised bed is convenient because it will be easy to work in not having to kneel down. But if we were to fill this whole bed with quality soil, that would get super expensive. About three or four years ago, I filled this deep metal raised bed with the same method that I'm going to show you today and the results were incredible. Every spring, the plants are healthy and happy. I grew some monster spinach one spring, and by the time summer came, the whole bed was completely filled with veggies. Some of the lettuces got massive. I harvested a number of beautiful cabbages from this bed as well, big, healthy, and delicious ones. So I know for a fact, this method of filling deep beds works. Let's hop over to our deep raised bed and start filling it so we can get a step closer to harvesting. We're going to start by filling our bed with logs. If you can get logs that are old and rotting and have been sitting for a few years, those are best in my opinion. They break down quicker than fresh cut down trees, but they will be lighter than fresh cut down trees, making them easier to move. And also, the main thing is rotted logs will be able to absorb some water, allowing deep rooted plants to tap into them during the dry season. I dug up logs from a deep bed I filled years ago and the old logs had the roots of plants running through them. Let's get the bottom of our bed filled with logs. If I were to fill the whole bottom of our bed with native soil, it would be too dense and wouldn't drain well, and the soil would lack oxygen and possibly go anaerobic, which means without oxygen, which is bad because our plant's roots need oxygen to breathe. When we fill the base of our bed with logs, they will not only allow for better drainage, but since they're rotting, they'll be able to hold some moisture as well. Rotting wood has an incredible ability to both retain and distribute water, which is why they are such a great option for the base of the bed. And also, over time, the logs will break down into humus and improve the soil. After we get our base layer of logs in, we can start adding some smaller organic matter like branches. You can add small sticks as well, which I've done in some of my other beds. Basically anything that is natural but isn't green. We don't want to add both green and brown materials into our raised bed and then cover them with soil, or the two could compost together and that would cause a soil stomach ache. If you do want to add in some fresh plants or greens, just allow them to sit and dry out and compost down in the bed before you add soil on top. After adding my logs and a few branches, I only have about 20 inches left to fill this bed. Me and Tuck want to mention, now is a perfect time to grab a raised bed. They will last for over 20 years. They come in so many different colors, like pearl white, terracotta, olive green, sky blue, and many others. Grab your metal raised bed now at teamgrow.us. We want to create a buffer between our logs and our good soil. I will add in some composted squash vines that I have. They will act as a great filler and will still allow for good drainage. I'm not going to add sticks this time because I don't have any on hand. Next, we will add in some soil that will help build more of that buffer up. This is if some of our plant's roots reach deeper than our good soil, they have something they can easily root into. This will also fill the gaps between the logs so the soil doesn't sink a lot. You can use native soil, I have done that in the past for some of my other beds and it works fine, or even some finished compost, but this time I'm using old homemade potting mix that I used to grow plants last year. I just composted it down and now I'm reusing it as a filler for my bed. We want some air space so the soil can breathe, but we don't want big pockets of space. Then I will add in some more filler soil on top. Now we only have about 14 inches from the top of the bed, which is perfect because I know the bed will sink down a bit. You can water the bed in if you want, if you're not expecting a rain, to help the soil settle deeper in the bed. Now is the time to start adding in our homemade, high quality, raised bed soil that me and Tuck make ourselves. I showed you in a previous video how I make this. We'll put it into these five gallon buckets, then we'll start adding it into our bed. Let's start filling the rest of our bed with our homemade soil. We had a rain, so the soil sank just a little bit more, but we only have about 15 inches of soil to fill. So we're getting all the advantages of a deep bed without paying more for soil, yet we will still get massive harvest from this bed this year. Start filling it up. Over time, the bed will sink, but that will take a long time because the logs will last for many years in there. Every year or so, if we want, we can add a bit more soil or even just some compost and mix that in to help replace the small amount of sinkage. Let's get our last bucket in 
for today, see how close we are to filling this up? We'll spread it all out. Just like this, looking beautiful. Looks like we can still add a little bit more soil in here. But for today, I think that looks pretty good. Essentially, we're all ready to go for spring. The only additional thing that I will do is I'll mix in some fertilizer into my soil before I transplant or before I direct sow. Then, in no time, we'll be grabbing massive harvest from here, feasting on the fruits of our labor. If you want to fill your deep raised bed, I suggest you use logs like I did or some kind of organic matter. You don't want to use inorganic matter and you want to make sure that it drains well. We really don't want our soil going anaerobic. This whole thing needs to drain. We don't want it to fill up like a bucket would with water and then all that soil to just sit in stagnant water. We want it to be able to drain well. That's why the logs just work so proficiently in my opinion. You wouldn't want to put like huge rocks and boulders down there that could prevent some drainage. So overall, with this technique, drainage is super important and those logs are so cool because not only will the water drain around them, but again, they'll fill up like water batteries and then deep rooted plants can tap into that water during the dry season. It's worked for my bed over here and it's uh, just a fantastic way to be able to grow food, to save some money and essentially make it so we only had to fill a bed that's like 12 to 18 inches deep. If you wanted to save even more money, you could have just left it at 12 inches and then only filled the top 12 inches with good soil. Just make sure you keep a buffer below those 12 inches of like some native soil or some compost, just so the roots have something to tap into before the logs break down. We essentially have one deep raised bed all filled and finished and we still have a bunch of more beds that we need to get filled me and tuck are super excited about it there's nothing like getting out here on a beautiful day getting your hands dirty in preparation for the spring and the summer garden i could just see some of the harvests i want to show you a few more things check out these two new raised beds we put in they look beautiful don't they and check out the arch trellis i can just envision some plants growing up the side, some tomatoes, some cucumbers, some beans, grab and harvest as I walk through. I cannot wait. We've even started to trellis some of a grapevine. So imagine grapes hanging over the top as I walk in. Another thing I cannot wait to try out is this raised bed cover. This is gonna make all the difference for my harvests. I know it. It's going to be able to protect it from insects and also from rodents and stuff. So it's gonna just give us overall harvest insurance. Tuck's back there working hard. We'll see him in a minute. I wanna show you another thing. Check out this raised bed. This one's really cool because this one's going to be a self-watering raised bed where we put wicking cells at the bottom. So in the heat of summer, the bed's gonna be wicking up water and it's just gonna make less work for us. We're not gonna to have to water as often. Me and Tuck had a lot of fun out here. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. He never quits. He's been going hard for 14 years and he's the leader of the channel. We wanted to send a thank you, and I especially wanted to send a thank you to everyone for all the continued support that you give Tuck, all the love you share with him, and all the hearts that you spam down low. That means, like, it means the world to me. This guy, he never stops. I don't want to pet him too much because my hands are dirty, but he's always out here. He's always working hard. Overall, we had a blast out here. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, we hope you got some true value out of it. And we hope you get your deep raised bed filled cheap, but also make it so it's still filled with great soil. So it'll be super productive and you'll get some massive harvest this year. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.